morning. So we are going on a 10 day road trip. Um, I have to pack today. I have to get all of my art supplies ready to go. So it's gonna be like a, um, a travel kit that I have. I've had it for a few years, but I've actually updated and made it even smaller than I'm used to carrying around with me. Like I used to do, you know, Copic markers and stuff. So I'm going to pack my travel kit together. And um, even though this is my travel kit, I actually use basically the same stuff when I'm at home. So I feel like the work is consistent throughout, even though I'm not at home. I also have like a miniature scanner that I've brought along with me for a few years now. So it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Ideally, you know, I would have liked not to have brought the scanner along, which because it's, you know, got the glass, it's kind of hairy if you pull it in and out and if it doesn't work and you're on the road and you have deadlines it's it's pretty tough so um it is what it is but it worked out it's it's been what over five years since I've used it so it's my go-to anyhow I'm gonna start packing now most of that stuff I'm gonna try to turn in a couple pages today and that would save me from having to pack my scanner but on top of that there's other stuff to do anyways I'm gonna finish this coffee and then maybe crash later. I already packed, some, you know, my clothes and everything. So tomorrow I have to finalize and get the, um, you know, art supplies ready. So here are my pens and pencils, adapters, camera stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna bring my laptop and my iPad. And uh, those are the two things I'm gonna use for when I'm scanning some of the pages. Also have the little scanner that I'm gonna hopefully stick in here, but I don't know if it's gonna fit with all the paper and stuff. Uh, usually I put it in my suitcase, but that's all full, so. It goes like this. All right, let's try to get the scanner. Okay, so here's a little scanner for me. It's really small. I really should plug this in to make sure it's working properly. So maybe I'll do that, but let's see if it fits first. Yeah, it fits, but I don't know if it's going to fit when there's um actually paper in here. So we'll try that out first. This is pushing the limits of my bag, but luckily I don't have clothes in it this time. So, not going to be horrible. Let's do a quick test scan. Dragons. Okay. Oof, what a mess. Oh my God. My fear is always like forgetting things that I would normally use, but I, I somehow think that just because I'm not home, I'm all of a sudden magically going to use a different pencil or way of doing things. So, um... I'm gonna to try to be a little bit more realistic instead of overpacking or perhaps even underpacking. It, it sounds like it's gotten slower throughout the years though, so um, it's not good. So let's try to scan it at 400 DPI's. Mm, put it on the desktop. Okay, so this is the pencil set and inks that I'm bringing with me. Um, so extra inks for my brush pens and um, just my, what do you call it, my nib, eraser, you know, sharpener, pencil lead. So this is much smaller than it used to be. And here are my favorite pens and pencils that I used, um, used before I started to use this one, these ones because I'm so used to these ones. And these specific uh, mechanical pencils, they do different things that, you know, um, I like how they feel and the grip and uh, depending on my workstation when I travel, things like this are important, like the height of the desk and the chair and all that stuff. So that's it. And a Sharpie, of course. Miniature ruler. I have a T-square in the uh, main comic pack with the pages already, but um, this is nice if I didn't want to pull it out. I was in the car and I wanted to sketch and stuff. So these are my pens and inks right here. And uh, believe it or not, this is toiletries, makeup, you know, I try to keep it pretty simple. So this is basically 
my uh, main travel pack outside of the clothes and of course the um, electronics. By the way, this is like the most important piece of equipment I have, really. It's the USB to USB-C adapter and uh, you know, most things are still USB. So anyways, I think I lost one of these and it drove me nuts so I had to buy a, another one just to have a backup so I should probably buy a couple more. towards the uh, Holland Lake and the waterfall uh, trailhead right now. So hopefully, hopefully it's still well maintained and there's not a whole lot of people up there because it's kind of narrow up towards the top part of it. And then, yeah, so taking the lower trail to, where's the falls at? I think it's right there. Right there, okay. Yeah, yeah turn around Luke. See that? There you go. <laughs> I used to do hikes that were much more uh, complex and harder to do than this. But you know, I feel like I've gotten to that age where I don't really want to challenge myself in those ways. This beautiful thing. We get our fairy slippers on and off our feet. <laughs> <laughs> Wander like fairies in the forest. <laughs> I can easily just enjoy the fire, you know, and seeing some wildlife and short hikes where I could get to see, you know, vast views and waterfalls. I mean, to me, that's pretty much enough and it's pretty relaxing as it is. Uh, not to mention, since I already live in the woods, a lot of the stuff I really could probably do without, like, you know, the, the traverse it takes to get to a certain point where I get these immaculate views. And that's also why it's really nice to live here in Montana. And then you get to hang out with this cute little guy, uh, Henry. He's not my puppy, but he definitely feels like it sometimes. Um, and he uh, he's a dog that travels a lot, especially in RVs. But look at him, he's so cute. I don't actually have like a set schedule for how much I get done when I'm uh, you know, out uh, on vacation. I have an idea of how much I have to get done overall. And then I try to get, you know, find the time while I'm enjoying myself um, to get some work done. And since I've done it for a few years, it's like uh, my family and my friends, they sort of understand that I'm probably gonna step away and just like find the best, most flat spot to start drawing and, you know, just sketch basically. The toughest part about drawing out here is, the, the toughest part about drawing out here is the uh, changing weather, right? To hear the wind right now, it's probably pretty crazy. Okay, it's getting dark. It's probably like 6.30, 7 o'clock right now. Um, I'm just gonna draw until I get too cold. And it doesn't really get dark till 9.30, but then it might get windy too. So um, I'm just gonna try to get these trees done now. And then hopefully in our next destination, I could actually start working on the uh, characters. I actually went uh, pack rafting for the first time uh, on this trip and uh, thanks to my friend Luke who is also a uh, backpacking guide. He started his business uh, a couple years ago and uh, yeah it was kind of fun to um, have him on the trip before he had to take off and exactly we took off we went a separate you. direction and uh, did our, the rest of our trips you know in other places. So we drove to Bozeman, Montana, and uh, you know, we're staying here for a night, and then we're basically heading out to Livingston, Montana to hang out with our friend Steve for his birthday. He happens to be on set working on a film, so he kind of showed me around. You know, of course, my obsession with horses, like that was the first thing he showed me, so that was really, really cool. And uh, to be honest with you, after I got a taste of seeing like a set, especially a Wild West themed set, I was like sold, like, this is what I wanted to do. And even on the way here, um, on this trip when it started, I already knew that I wanted to really get into film and actually push that, you know, so that was really neat. Are you dating the goat? <laughs> hey, cutie.
you know, one of my favorite、uh, video games is Red Dead Redemption, and、uh, I'm one of those people who, you know, once I got a taste of it, I wanted to see what it felt like in real life to be in the same type of environment. And so much so that not only did I move to a place that allowed that for me, but I also visit places still that give me that, you know, feel of being in the wilderness and in the outdoors, you know, and、uh, I guess you could also say Skyrim was another thing. And it's pretty obvious just by seeing this that this is as Skyrim as it gets,、um, especially because I listen to the soundtrack quite often when I'm working. So I basically used all of this experience and、um, passion I've had for the outdoors, you know, in my、uh, creator own comic book, Lola XOXO. The third volume basically took place in Yellowstone, and、um, it was basically inspired by my trip a couple years back. When I first, you know, did a road trip through here and I decided to incorporate everything that I saw here in、uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Hello, it is 9 p.m. right now and I'm about ready to ink Lady Mechanica. Here's the thing the furniture is very nice, everything is,、uh, you know, I don't want to get it dirty, especially with ink. So, I'm gonna have to try to figure out how to ink it without, you know, staining something in the hotel room. It's late, I haven't inked or worked in, I guess it feels like I lost track, but maybe two days now. So,、um, I feel like I have to get my bearings back. But if I could at least get one panel done and inked, Maybe even with a ballpoint pen, I would be pretty happy. So, I'm going to try to do that right now、um, and not make a huge mess so that I could feel productive. So, before I forget, here is a quick、uh, look at what I got so far done at the、um, camping, you know, first two days or so. The goal is to get this done today and then、um, get it scanned and turned in. Funny enough, I brought the scanner. It is in the bubble wrap still. Look at how light it is. I could hold it up with one hand. So, usually I just stick it in my backpack, but、um, I knew that we we're just going to be grabbing our suitcases and luggage and backpacks in and out of the car constantly. So, it was going to get banged up. So, I had to put it in bubble wrap. You know, and here is my travel kit, like I said. Like you, you know. I've been utilizing this pretty good. The, the brush pens are effective so far、um, on this trip. We're going to see how it is because this is actually not synthetic hair, so it's supposed to soak up the ink more before. And the, the Eon boards are a lot more, there's a little bit more teeth, so it's not as smooth and it's probably going to soak in the ink better in this、uh, climate. So I guess we will see. And.、Uh, Come to you from Hotel Jackson. I think these are chocolates. I'm gonna have to open that. Okay, so the goal for、um, this road trip is to get two pages of Lady Mechanica done and then、um, get some of Dragon's Glacier. So that's all I brought with me.、Uh, so I had started inking. Let me put this down. So this is page. 14, and I inked this at the campground. So、um, it was super windy, and if anything, that was probably the most challenging thing. It、um, wasn't so much the wind, because I brought like clips and stuff to hold the page down. It was actually the rain, because it started to rain、um, like here and there. And as soon as I, I felt like a drop of rain, I stuck, my,、um, I stuck this page into. The plastic bag and I stopped, so it was like stop and go.、Um, and I knew that was going to happen. I could have I could have technically just inked inside my tent or sat in the car and whatever, but I guess part of it was I'm supposed to be enjoying my time with my family. So、um, trying to get into the groove of things when you're out there and the elements kept changing because it was really nice and sunny. There was no rain in the forecast. but As you know, being in the mountains, it like could change at a moment's notice. So I didn't want to take that chance. But now that I'm in a nice, cozy hotel room, it's much easier to、um, just sit here and draw.
But that being said, I am on, I guess you'd call it vacation. So uh, it's kind of hard to sit and draw at my desk when it is super sunny outside, which doesn't happen that often here in the mountains. Um, but it is a nice desk, so that was the whole point of getting this really long desk set up was to make sure that I could get my work done. So I'm going to be inking, you know, um, this whole page, scan it, send it off, and uh, then have lunch. So I guess without further ado, I'm going to get some work done. So uh, there's something I forgot to mention, like um, I have different approaches to working in, um, you know, different situations and different environments. Um, that is because I love my job, but at the same time, I know that if I was kind of, let's just say stuck at my desk or if I, every time I have a deadline, I have to work at my desk, then I would be, I'd have a hard time, um, you know, doing that consistently because as much as I love drawing, I love, I love nature, I love exploring, I love photography and, and just kind of, um, you know, just living. So I've, not only that, but when I was traveling a lot for conventions, I would have to have deadlines. Like I never didn't have deadlines when I was traveling for shows. And, you know, so I had to be able to bring my work along with me. And I traveled light for the most part. I would bring only, you know, like um, my backpack. And once in a while, I bring like a small suitcase. But I try to keep things condensed and small because I like to be quick on my toes and uh, be, be able to maneuver and, and adjust to things because there's times when things change with the deadlines or, you know, signings or shows would be a lot busier than I expected. And, um, you know, it's just something that I kind of learned after years of, uh, of doing this that, you know, I should be able to figure out how to maintain a certain level of quality and uh, my approach even when I'm traveling without... You know, that's a lot of people would probably ask me, like, why don't you just um, do it all digitally? Well, I mean, I, I have a lot of fans that love my original art and um, I myself love drawing on paper. So it's kind of hard for me to give that up unless the, the client that I'm working with requires or only prefers digital art and, and colors. And of course, I'd go that route. But when it comes to my own stuff, I'm going to pick pen and ink before I pick, you know, digital any day. So that's just a preference and I've just learned how to work around it and, and make it work for myself. So I'm always, you know, trying out new uh, supplies and uh, new approaches because it's part of why I enjoy anything in life really is the ex uh, exploring and experimenting and coming up with new ways of doing something. So um, it's no different with my art. I do the same thing with art as I do with uh, nature and that's why I love backpacking and stuff. I love exploring and um, that's why I love open world video games and all that. So it, it's all the same, same thing. Yeah. So my ideal setup, even if I was at home, is um, to get my brush pens to have an ink that dries just fast enough for me to work as quickly as I do and um, also not clog up the pen. So. I figured it out a couple years ago, but since I stopped really traveling during the year, um, I forgot how I managed to get it to work. So I think when I, I get back home, I'm probably going to figure that out again because, I mean, with all the pages I have to do every day and, you know, running the business, I need to get things moving as quickly as possible. And, um, you know, that kind of stuff matters, like seconds and minutes and things like that matter. And even where I put my head, my mental space when I start, that also matters. So it's just, it all goes into just performing at the best um, possible state and also um, having fun. Yep. Today's supposed to be, yeah. So, oh my God. Today's supposed to be the, this is really hard to do. So this motel does not have a desk so I'm going to finish funny enough outlining the border with a ruler on a bed that may or may not be very steady so wish me luck on that um but I'm going to turn this page in today before we go to the campground and that would leave me with one more page to ink tomorrow hopefully hopefully there's no more commotions with uh 
any kind of wildlife or you know anything like that but um yeah so this should be it pretty exciting uh been on the road for i've already lost track what like a week now so um so things aren't moving as fast as they normally would but that's kind of to be expected but it's been pretty fun to figure out how to manage everything you know with a deadline so pretty cool all right i will talk to you guys soon okay time to pull the scanner out and uh scan it in my makeshift at least oh at least there's a flat surface to work on there's no desk in here so we're just gonna scan it on the shoe rack i think already had the scanner with me for about seven years now and it works still works pretty nicely and I banged it up pretty good a few times okay so we're gonna scan it in three sections um, maybe even four because it is tiny let's see JPEG, desktop, um, you know, all the good stuff. Okay, so go to file, automate, and then photo merge. So I just leave it at auto, browse, um, desktop. Grab these three and open. It's kind of like magic if you look down here. It just does its own thing. Bam, look at that. Whew, pretty sweet. Once upon a time, I used to have to do this manually and it took forever. And it wasn't even that good, so. Thank goodness for Photoshop and my miniature little scanner setup. If not for these things, you know, I don't think I could uh, travel as much as I did and do still. So, kudos. Okay, this is ready to send off to Beth. She's going to get this colored. And I'm going to try to get caught up and send the last page for the trip on Monday. Since I'll be in the campground for two days. So, um, hopefully I get to draw my hands don't freeze off. It's pretty cold. It's pretty surreal when you think about the fact that we were just in town and stayed in hotel rooms for a couple of days and then we end up, you know, packing and then staying in a campground and doing that whole thing all over again. So it's like a, it's a nice juxtaposition. You're still outdoors, but it's definitely, you know, Maybe the bed is definitely a more comfortable than the floor. Day two, Jenny Lake Trail. We did this trail yesterday, or not the whole thing. We actually only went to Hidden Falls, which is about the halfway mark. I think probably a little less. And uh, that was a pretty cool falls. Huge. Way bigger than Holland Lake Falls, which we saw about a week ago. Pretty muddy. What's even more? Is it's very icy and muddy and slippery. Tetons are showing off. Oh, this is so epic. One of the more beautiful hikes I've been on. Look at that view. It's quite the hike just to get over here. Um, when it's all said and done, it's gonna be eight miles of snow and stuff. Pretty little boat going through. It would be very easy if I just, you know, sat at my desk and did my work. And now that I live out in the woods, I could just enjoy that. But I feel like backpacking and being outdoors and hiking was such a huge part of my life for over 10 years that um, it brings me back. It clears my mind. I feel refreshed and ready to go again. And, you know, I think, I think our bodies and our mind needs to be 
around nature, you know, as often as possible. And you kind of see things for what they are and all the beauty. And I know it sounds super cheesy, but it's kind of true. And it's, you know, kind of hard to separate what we do for our own life experiences. And you could even say that the style of art that we draw also reflects on the way that we live life, the way we see things and our personal experiences. So I feel like the more experiences I've had, the more confident I felt my style was and who I am as a person. And, you know, it's kind of hard to separate the art from the artist in that sense. Like we pour everything into it and we put our life experiences, which is the most genuine when it comes to creating art and expressing ourselves. I think it's going to be pretty clear when everybody sees uh, Lady Mechanica that a lot of my experiences, especially from this trip, I've taken with me and actually um, used a lot of the stuff in the book, you know, whether it's the elements or the uh, just the feel of the book. But, you know, it's funny enough that uh, Joe and Marcia came to me with a story and it basically took place outdoors in the winter and with a lake and everything. So it's like, it's like there is, you know, some kind of, uh, it's so meta <laughs> how this whole thing happened. It was like meant to happen this way. Okay. So I have, <clears throat> oh, first off, good morning. I have one hour left to finish this page before we check out of the hotel and head back home. So I'm going to make like a tree and draw really fast. You know, for a while now, I've uh, kept the outdoors side of me kind of not hidden away, but, you know, I separate that from my art and my art post. But I feel like it's hard to talk about what I do without including all the beauty I see out in nature. And hopefully this inspires you to go out there and, uh, you know, go see whatever you can and just take in and soak in all of your experiences and use that to uh, better our art, you know.